Why are there so many different Chinese rockets? Have a look at this. These are the rockets in service in the US. These are the rockets in service in Europe, Russia, India, and Japan combined. And here's China. As you can see, there is a very noticeable difference in the number of rockets that China operates. And this number will probably continue to grow in the coming years with the dawn of Chinese commercial launch vehicles. So why on earth does China have so many rockets? And does it really need that many rockets? Let's find out. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More on them later. Intuitively, it seems that having a limited number of rockets makes more sense from an industrial standpoint. After all, SpaceX, for example, has been launching the Falcon 9 with a variety of payloads from large geostationary satellites all the way to the smallest CubeSats through rideshare missions. Well, one of the first reasons for China's crowded rocket landscape is modularity. Many of the Chinese rockets that you see are variants of a common base model with more or less strap-on boosters to accommodate different payload masses. The Long March 3A, 3B, and 3C, for example, consist of the same core rocket with either 0, 2, or 4 side boosters. And this is actually not specific to China. Other rockets, such as ULA's Atlas V, are known to have many different versions. But modularity alone doesn't really explain the unusually high number of Chinese rockets. One other big reason is that China is in the middle of a transition. For the past 40 years, China has been exploiting old generation rockets, the Long March 2, 3, and 4 series, which aren't very efficient by today's standards. They use hypergolic fuels, which are toxic, and they're not really adapted to launching large clusters of satellites. To solve this, China has developed over the past decade the Long March 5, 6, 7, and 8 series, which are more modern rockets burning kerosene, liquid oxygen, and in certain cases, liquid hydrogen. But while these new rockets are now in service, if you look at a chart of Chinese launches over the past 10 years, you realize that the old Long March 2, 3, and 4s are still being used in parallel of these new generation rockets. To explain why this handover between old and new hasn't really taken place, let's look at this on a map. The old generation rockets are launched from China's historical launch sites. So that's Zhou Chen, Taiyuan, and Xichang, while the new generation rockets can only be launched from the more recent Wenchang Launch Center on the eastern coast of Hainan. The thing is, Wenchang only has two active launch pads, and when you combine that with the fact that China has been experiencing an unprecedented surge in demand for launch services in recent years, well, the result is that older generation rockets are being maintained as a solution to provide for this demand. And so China's transition from old to new gen rockets is not yet complete. And this launch bottleneck could actually last quite a few more years since the country should be launching very soon its own version of Starlink called Guowang, which could consist of up to 13,000 satellites. Internal competition is also a factor increasing the number of rockets. For example, within the Chinese conglomerate Cask, you have SAST and CALT, which both design rockets. And typically, the recent Long March 6A designed by SAST has a very similar payload capacity to the Long March 8 designed by CALT, and so there may be some redundancies there. This kind of competition also exists between Chinese commercial launch companies, where you have roughly 15 startups all developing their own rockets with similar capacities and scheduled to enter service in the coming two to three years. And cherry on the cake, we also have state-owned companies that are currently joining the race by creating their own commercial spin-offs called China Rocket and X-Base and putting into service their own families of commercial rockets, the Kuaizhou's and the Jialong series. So what we're likely to see in the coming years is actually a further increase in the number of Chinese rocket types in service, again due to the introduction of new commercial rockets and to the fact that China is keeping its older rockets active. But after that, a decrease should follow thanks to the completion of new launch pads in Wenchang, Zhejiang, and Shandong, enabling the new generation Long March rockets to slowly take over the old. And also this decrease will be further accentuated by the inevitable consolidation in the commercial launch sector because naturally there isn't enough room for 15 Chinese commercial launch startups to coexist. Of course, this transition will necessarily take a couple of years due to the complexity linked to building new launch pads, to the transition of the industrial chain from one rocket type to another, and naturally the complexity of designing new rockets. Now, on that point, rocket science and rocket design may seem very difficult to comprehend, but there is a fantastic way to grasp the fundamentals of how it all works using the interactive online courses provided by today's sponsor, Brilliant. 
Brilliant is a fantastic tool for the casual space enthusiast curious to know more about the science working in the background. Their courses range from the very basic all the way to the most advanced, and one of the best things in my opinion is that they've partnered with some of my favorite YouTube creators to do so. One such example is the series dedicated to rockets, created in partnership with Real Engineering. You can discover the principles of rocket theory, why rockets need multiple stages, the concept of orbital velocity, and much, much more. Everything is done in a very interactive way, which makes the whole process much more enjoyable than just watching lecture videos. To start this learning process for free, you can go to brilliant.org slash hour or click on the link in the description below. And the first 200 listeners will get a 20% off the annual premium membership, unlocking all the problem solving courses and challenges. A big thanks to Brilliant for their support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.